Joining us now is Fernando Vidal, co-founder and chief data scientist at 314 Research. Fernando, why isn't NVIDIA investable here, you think? Hi, John, thanks for having me on. So yeah, NVIDIA really is overvalued from our perspective. And that overvaluation is not really about what's gonna happen in the next 12 months, but what happens after. NVIDIA today is priced for a good decade, not just a good year. And what we wanted to look at was uh, analyst estimates for revenue over the next four years is, if you believe those estimates, are for NVIDIA to ship about $200 billion worth of enterprise AI hardware. And what we wanted to do was frame that and figure out just how much capacity is that and what kind of ramp for AI adoption does that imply? So in our thought experiment, uh, in our, our calculation, we came out to uh, being able to support today's latest AI language models running for about two and a half billion hours a week. And to put that number in perspective, there's about five billion hours of knowledge work being done in the US economy a week. So if you think ChatGPT is equivalent to a typical US knowledge worker, you know, there's going to be enough hardware floating around in four years to automate mm. half of uh, all knowledge workers in the U.S. Okay, Fernando, so here's my pushback to that. And it goes back, uh, I don't know, probably about 15 years now, the, more than that. People were arguing that Apple was overvalued back then based on how many iPods and maybe Macs people would have to justify, to, to buy to justify the valuation. They weren't thinking about the platform potential that the whole company had built based on the iTunes success, the loyalty of the customer. Couldn't uh, NVIDIA be similar? NVIDIA could be similar, but remember that there are definitely huge established players with enormous platforms specifically that can leverage AI today. Their biggest customers are their biggest competitors, if that's the narrative that you want to go with for an AI bull story. Um, today, the, all their customers basically hate the position they're in, that they're going to have to spend huge portions of their CapEx budget with NVIDIA. And you know they have this window right now where it's inevitable. Everybody wants capacity today, but all their customers are desperate to replace NVIDIA with their own custom design chips. Google's already made a bunch of progress on that. Amazon's working on their own. Uh, basically, NVIDIA's at odds with, the, with their customers today, and uh, it's gonna lead to trouble down the line if you expect NVIDIA to just dominate the market share for AI chips going so, forward. So, in a way, the fact that customers are doing exactly what you said, developing their own custom AI chips, and of course you've got you know, AMD, Intel, and others working to compete, doesn't that open up the possibility, the excuse for NVIDIA to develop its own services, its own you know, models within AI by industry and sell those, adding to their margin potential through software? Definitely, that's got to be the bull story. But you know, to do that, you have to believe that they're going to invent a new revenue segment that they don't currently have, and compete with the established players. So you know, most of the the revenue growth right now, if you want to go with what they're actually doing, is shipping uh, enterprise grade AI hardware. So you really need to go towards uh, a new segment that they don't have an existing platform on that all these other companies have a huge lead on. They already have you know, huge installed bases of enterprise customers to sell to, mm -hmm. and NVIDIA is going to have their work to work their way into market share there. So um, what does it tell you, if anything, that NVIDIA is spending so much time with partners, like we saw them uh, today with VMware, uh, they were just in Taipei with partners a, a few weeks ago talking about AI, investing in other players there. Are they trying to build out a justification platform strategy allies to counter the bear case you're laying out? They're going to have to do that. Like the next 12 months is going to arm them with a huge amount of cash that they'll very, like I would be unsurprised if they didn't do a bunch of M&A. They're already kind of working, uh, uh, funding a bunch of startups, building service cloud uh, providers. Um, so it wouldn't surprise me at all if they use some of the, the cash from this kind of windfall to uh, try to get a strategic play into the cloud services um, area. Hmm. Um, but again, it's a, it's a risky move. You kind of have to believe that they're going to be extremely successful doing this um, and outcompete all the existing enormous uh, platforms that, that exist in this space. All right. We'll see if they can outrun the bear case. Fernando Vidal, thank you.